Well, hey, hey, everybody. Have you wanted to do credit spreads but really didn't want to leverage $100 capital or anything higher than that? Maybe you like smaller um, stocks and you want to put smaller amounts of money up for capital and for your credit spreads. I'm going to show you in this video four different stocks. This is only my choice, but there's plenty you can choose from, right? I'm going to tell you how to find them. But I'm going to give you an example of four different stocks that you can use to trade less than $50 of collateral in order to generate consistent profits and to grow your accounts. So let's get into it. Any stock that is less than $50 is going to offer you 50 cent spread. And when I say 50 cent spread, I'm talking about the difference between the strikes being 0.5. So you can have 38, 38.5, 39. Those are 50 cent spread and they require $50 of collateral, right? It gives you the opportunity to use a smaller amount of collateral, maybe across several different stocks and generate profits at least 10%, maybe even up to 20% on each of your trades, depending on how you set them up. So let's look at some examples. I'm looking at Apache Corporation. First thing you want to do when you're doing any credit spreads is you want to chart for support and resistance. I want to pause real quick just for station identification and say, please be sure and you need to know that this is not trading advice. I am not a financial advisor. Everything that you do, you're basically doing it of your own volition. I'm just here to show you how do you enter credit spreads and offer some tips on those things. None of these stocks are anything that I've traded. I'm just using them for example purposes. Okay. So Apache here, I did this, I charted the support here down around the 37.6 range. There's also a gap here that will provide or should provide. Usually gaps do provide some support or resistance. I'm putting that in here. That really takes us down to about 38, but maybe looking at the Support here, we're down around 37.5 to be safe. 38 strike would potentially be good to use as well. Let's go on up here to the option chain. We can start with the week that you're already in, the week that we're already in. This has a four DTE, right? Remember, you're going to leverage the same collateral whether you're going out for one week or two weeks or three or whatever. Some people like to go a little further to capture higher premiums. For me, I'm, I really like to stay in less than 21 days. It's just my own personal preference. You know, what you pick for strikes is, again, your personal preference. Just know you're going to leverage the same amount of collateral and you're going to collect your premiums no matter how far you go out in trade. But remember, as a seller, Theta and Theta Decay really is our friend, so we don't have to go out too far unless you just choose to. I like to stay less than 21 days, but here we are looking at October the 13th, which will be this coming Friday. If we're looking at the 38 strike price, we would collect $8 here, right? $8 collected for a 50 cent spread. You're going to take a dollar and some change away for fees. So let's say $6.50 you're going to keep. That's a little bit better than 10% return on your $50. Or if you're okay with the 38 point, I think I said 37.5, 38, we're going to be the safest places. Let's go with that. But let's look out for October the 20th at the 38, 37.5, 38 strike. Yes, this is now offering $13 in premium just to go out for 11 days. You can enter this trade. I click on it. Make sure you're in the bid column when you're a seller. We're going to collect $15 here. We're leveraging 50, collecting 15, which means our max loss is only $35. You can see that here when you click on the, the column and for the bid and everything that you're ready to do. That trade would go in 38, 37.538 put credit spread, which basically says you want price to expire above 38 at the time on October the 20th. You want the price to be above $38 on October the 20th, right? Let's go to another one. Let's check another stock. I like SOXL. We're just going to take a look here, see if there's an opportunity on SOXL. See if there's an opportunity. Is there an opportunity using the semiconductor ETF? So SOXL has come out of its support area and it's coming into a resistance area. This provides and, and gives us a unique opportunity because as the price is coming into 
a support or resistance zone, the premiums usually are, are pretty nice. Some people are comfortable entering the trade when it's coming into the zone with the thought and expectation that it will hit the zone and return. Other people want to wait till it actually does the returning before they enter the trade. But I just want to show you what you would do and why and when. So we're looking at a call credit spread here above the $19 because this is where the resistance is. There's another resistance zone up here above $21. May not be much premium at the $21 mark, but we can look up there when we, when we look at this trade. I like the $19 maybe the $20, 20 or $21. Let's look at those two. Switch over to the trade screen. I'm going to look here at this week at 4DTE. You're looking at the, if you're looking at the, the 20 strike, the 20 strike actually is collecting $15 in premiums. If you go up to the 21, you see here the amount that you're getting for premiums goes down to $6, right? So the 20 strike would be one I'd be comfortable with, but I want to show you one thing before I switch off of there. Let's go to the single chart looking at the 20 strike and check out the probability at the money. Probability at the money says there's a 64% chance this is going to be out of the money. And for some people, that's a little closer than they might want to be. Maybe you want at least 70% probability that your trade is going to be good. Probability out of the money because we want to be out of the money as sellers. Probability out of the money says there's a 74% chance here and a 20.5 strike will be out of the money at expiration. So we can look at that. Then we take all of these indicators we take in, these different points that help us to make decisions, and we use them all to our advantage. The 20.5 strike actually is paying $11 right now, $10 or $11. And once we select it, actually the price usually goes up $11. That's a 20% return on your $50 of collateral. If you want more than $11, you can do multiple contracts. If you like the strike, you like the trade, put on more than one contract, collect your premiums in multiples, and you're in good shape. I picked 20.521 call credit spread, 74% chance that this is going to be out of the money, which means it's going to be a successful trade. So I've selected that. If you want something different in the price box, you're free to edit this and maybe go up or down with the price. Turn on the trade and it basically will sit in the working file until it gets picked up or until it gets filled. If it doesn't get filled, you can make adjustments. But sometimes I like to add an extra dollar. I feel like that's going to save me on my fees. The extra dollar may give me my fees. You collect $12, $38 max loss on that trade and you go ahead and enter that one. Let's look at another. Let's look at Palantir. Palantir, see where they are as far as their chart goes. And what you do with this, again, any stocks that are less than $50 are going to have a 50 cent spread for the most part. So you want to look for stocks that you like that are less than $50. There's so many ways you can use a screener to find those. You could use your bar chart screener to look for some call credit spread ideas. You can use Finviz. I mean, there's, I mean, your broker probably has a screener. There's so many of those that can be used to help you determine some stocks that are less than $50 that maybe fit what your criteria is for what you like to trade. Okay. We're looking at Palantir, checking out this chart. Palantir also is coming into a resistance area. It's, at the, it's filling a gap right now. There's a gap from, uh, looks like the gap starts at 1747 and goes up to about $18. Palantir is going in here to fill or trying to fill this gap. So $18 or above $18 could be potential resistance. If you wanted to go further, you could go up to $20. Actually, there's probably something in here in the 18 and some change area. But yeah, there's something in right in here that would also serve as resistance, 1888. So you can check 18, 19, or 20, depending on how you feel in about the movement of Palantir. I'm looking at the four days expiration, and we're going to look at 18, 19, and 20. Yes. 18 has a probability out of the money of 66%, right? The 19 strike has an 86% out of the money. That's just for 4 DTE. Let's say you want to go out a little bit further. You say, I think I'd like to go a little further as far as time goes, collect a little more in premiums. Let's look at those same strikes. 18 has a 62% probability out of the money, maybe a little low for many people. 
18.5 has 71. The 19 strike has 79% out of the money. Let's go with that one. I'm looking at October the 20th and the 19 strike. It's going to pay $7 in premiums, right? Because you're further away from current price. The current price is $17.50 or $17.46. So you go up to $19, you're going at a dollar and a half away and the premiums aren't as high as you'd like them. We can look out one more week. Let's check one more week and see if there's good opportunities. First, we want to switch to the single. Check out the probability out of the money. 75 at the 19 strike again. Vertical 19 strike is going to pay $9 this time. This is closer to your 20% return on your collateral. $10 here. I'd probably bump it up to 11 Push your confirm and send. It says you're going to collect $11, $39 max loss. You're putting on your trade with that. All right. First, you want to start with the chart. Start with the chart. You want to start with the chart. All righty. I want to repeat that and make sure I reiterate that you always start with the chart. Then you can look at other things. You can investigate whether or not you want to use any other indicators. We don't use too many indicators in my community. We use the chart. We have some moving averages, but for the most part, we're looking at chart patterns and we're looking at some of the moving averages. And then I will check that probability out of the money column on the option chain. That's the way that I like to work it. But you want to start with the chart. Woohoo! It's like a cheerleaders. <laughs> Just like the cheerleaders, start with the chart. All right, so Mara is the next one we're going to look at. This is the last one we're going to look at in this video. Has a support area down in the $7.23. And it's come out of that support area. So let's take a look on the option chain to see what the $7 strikes are looking like for probability out of the money. All right, I'm looking at Mara on the option chain at the seven strike, and it's a 90% chance out of the money at the seven strike. That's because the current price is $8.33. So basically, if we switch this over to the vertical and look for this week at the eight strike price, then we're going to collect, or did I, I think I said the seven strike price, we're going to collect only a dollar in premiums, not interested in that. So let's look at October the 20th at the seven strike, six dollars there, which is over 10% return. Let's go out one more week and look at the 27th at the seven strike price, right? Let's see, we said seven was a good strike. Yes, we did. Let me go back. I was going back to check and see if 750 might have some opportunities. If we thought 750 might be something we could possibly do. But uh, it is below where we currently are and at the top of this little support area here. Now, Mara is a little more volatile. So I think you should always be, you know, be a little more mindful. Of those that are a little um, higher in volatility may want to give them the room that they deserve. So if we look at October the 27th at the seven strike or the 6.57 spread, this one is paying $9 in premiums, actually $10 once you select it. $10 in premiums is 20% return, as I said. And you're picking the seven strike for the put credit spread. You're going to get 20% return on your $50 of collateral. And if you want more as far as money goes, then you go with more contracts. Let's say you decide you want to put on 10 contracts instead of one contract. Is you're gonna, now you're going to collect $10 per contract, 10 of those. You're collecting $100 in premiums with a $400 of max loss. Again, 20% return on your money. But this is within the 14 days of trading. Uh, not so bad. Let's push send and see how, how this goes. Alrighty, so I've shown you four different stocks. You can use for 50 cent spreads. They use $50 of collateral and you could collect at least 20% return on, those, on that collateral for those trades. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Click the notification bell. That way you can swing back around and see us as often as we post more content. Also, if you really want to lean in a little bit further on credit spreads, I do offer a training on vertical credit spreads. I'll put the link down in the description um, so you can go ahead and get an even more robust look at doing credit spreads 
for profits. Credit spreads to generate profits. Listen, it's a nice repeatable strategy. Alrighty, in my community, we do two things. We stay green and we get this money.